Hi, thanks for watching. So I'm sketching in the hummingbird here and you can see I'm using a grid method. If you see it's really faint in the background, but I'm actually drawing this on tracing paper with the grid method, um, which is the one inch grid that I use. Then I trace it onto my watercolor paper so I don't have to erase and correct and do all that on the actual watercolor paper because it's not great for watercolor paper. So now what I'm doing in the areas that I for sure don't want to lose my line, my pencil line, I'm using a pen to um, just go over my trace. And, um, <clears throat> and you really don't see it. I'm showing you uh, the masking fluid right there. Anyway, you really don't see the line um, after the paint is on there and everything. So it's just so I don't lose the lines. And then I went in with masking fluid to protect the areas that I don't want to get any paint on. I want it to stay real super white for this reason, because I'm going to do the background wet on wet. So this is a wet on wet style background where I did a lot of water first and then pretty much kind of where I wanted the background to go. I didn't wet the entire um, paper. I just I'm kind of just wetting where you, you where you see me doing these these kind of brush strokes and the angle. Then I'm taking a tissue and blotting it where I don't want any any color to go, any of the background to go. And then I, I'm lifting it up a little bit to get it to move around, get the paint to move around. And you can see I'm blotting, I'm blotting around the wing where I, I you know I want to kind of preserve the luminance of the paper so I don't want it to get too dark. I want to keep the kind of the white of the paper. And I'm letting the paint just kind of do what it wants to do, let it dry for a sec. Then I'm picking it up, let it dry, meaning like let it absorb into the paper. Then I'm picking with a with a damp brush with no paint on it. I'm picking up some of the paint um, to create more of a blended effect so I don't have hard edges. Now I'm adding a little bit of the, the uh, blue, the turquoise blue color while everything is still pretty wet and my brush is really wet. I'm just loosely putting it in and um, again it's it's really wet so I'm not too worried about depositing too much pigment right now. I know you know watercolor absorbs so quickly that um, it dries about 50% lighter so you have to keep that in mind too so you can see where I went really dark and the edges there so I first did a really light layer and then I went in with stronger pigment and just kind of charged it I just dropped it right in there and I'm getting the the smooth effects this is my first layers these are my first layers so I'm not worried about detail or anything like that I'm just getting the um, base layers and my outline so when I go in later I, I kind I can see where I'm going to do more detail on the feathers and the eyes and the face and so you can kind of see where I did the ink um, and my outline because of the pencil after you know after a couple layers of watercolor the pencil unless it's pretty dark it blends right in you, you, sometimes it's hard to see so that's why I did um, the ink and I can still see my line because I was really concerned with the feathers and the angles of those um, feathers there down right in the center uh, that I'm working on right now. I wanted to make sure I got those feathers and the angles of the feathers correct um, so it looked anatomically correct as well. I didn't want them to look kind of funky. So now while I'm letting those dry, I go back to the background again and I did a little area right there and um, and now the edge to that feather the dark part where I think that's Payne's gray that pretty much just dried but not I don't think a hundred percent so I'm kind of being careful with the edges there I'm not going in there too much but it's okay if it blends in a little bit because I want the I want the blended effect the watercolor look so now this is um, wet on wet again I am um, just putting the, the paint will just go where the water is on the um, paper so I just put the water in the area of, of the tail there so that's why the blue paint is just going just going where I want it to go and 
then I'm just kind of deciding what color to use and testing. What I'm doing now is testing a color on another sheet of paper. Um, and then I brought it in. So I was, yeah, I was kind of being a little careful because this is, this is um, you know, sepia and Payne's gray. So this is, I'm getting the, the chest of the hummingbird and I'm following my line pretty carefully. And now I'm dropping in uh, some, pr uh, some Prussian blue, it looks like. And I'm keeping the kind of the fuchsia green there area. I'm really gonna preserve that area because I want that to really look, kind of try to go for the fuchsia effect, those that shiny, beautiful effect that the hummingbirds have, that their, their feathers have. By the way, I am using the Schmanke Hordum Aquel. Aqu oh my gosh, the Schmanke Hordum watercolor paints um, set of twelve, and it's my first time using them, and I really like them a lot. Um, they are the colors are really vibrant. I think depends on some colors comparing to Winsor Newton. You know, I'll 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 do a little compare video one day, but um, for now. The colors that I'm using, just so I can tell you, like that one is the phthalo green in the set. So I didn't really mix it with anything. I don't, um, no, I didn't. I didn't mix it with anything. So it's just the really bright, beautiful phthalo green that they have in the set. I love it. Um, I think I used maybe a Winsor Newton Opera Rose, just a pop down for some of the, the colors there, but I pretty much used the Schmincke's uh, watercolors for this entire painting so just so you know um, so now I as you can see I wet the area um, with water first I did not wet those little I have no idea what to call them but I think they're around his ears those little round um, parts uh, they're even they're really a purpley part in the end so I didn't want to cover those and cover my lines so you can see I'm going around them and I didn't put any water on them so and around the eye area i didn't put any water around there so no paint will go in those areas right now i'm not ready to do those areas i'm just focusing on the edge and and my lines you can see there i picked up with just a damp brush i picked up some paint and blotted with the tissue. I didn't want it, to, it was getting a little too dark blue. Then I went right in there with a, uh, with yellow actually. I mixed a little bit of the lemon yellow with the phthalo green and I got that really pretty. Again, I'm trying to get this fuchsia glowy color. So um, I dropped in a lot of yellow there and then you just leave it, let it absorb don't want to mess around with it. That's a big trick with watercolors is just kind of leave it. Now you can see I changed brushes. I'm using a, um, I think it's a size one. And it's a Winsor Newton Series 7, one of my first times using that brush, which I really enjoyed. I liked it. Um, and I'm just trying to get the effects of the feathers, the layering of the feathers. So this is, this is my second layer here, so I went really light underneath. And then I'm going, I'm slowly building up the layers and going darker and darker and darker so that's what you want to do with watercolor is is really you know start start from light to dark and if i go too dark or get too much pigment in an area i just take my brush a clean damp brush and i just pick it 
pick it up. I just use the brush and pick up the pigment and blot, and then I have I have my um, white back of the paper. Maybe not fully white. I don't know if you ever get it 100% back, but a lot of times when you pick up with the brush anyway, um, it gives a nice smooth blending effect um, that I really like. Anyway, so I, I always I enjoy using that technique. So you can see I'm going pretty dark now. Um, I this is I'm, I'm layering, and I still have that very first layer of that really light blue. I still have that coming through, so I'm looking to get the effects of the layers of the feathers. Using my small size one brush, I'm just kind of moving the pigment around. My brush isn't very wet. I'm getting some more of the, um, of the blue. That blue is a uh, Prussian blue. And you can see, look how, look how it dried. Look how much lighter it dried. It looked really dark when it was first going on. Almost scary dark, right? And now when it dries, it's like, oh, wow, it looks blue or purple. So um, that's why with watercolor, it's all about layering. And you know, while we're on the subject of the, the blue and purple and the, and the blacks, um, you never want to use a flat black like in this this schminky uh, set that I have this kit it comes with the black but I rarely use it because I like to mix the blacks as most artists do a uh, Payne's gray Prussian blue with um, you know like a Venetian red or a sepia and um, a red or and, and you get a blue or you know any of the primaries you can mix together whether you want to go with like a really kind of a bluish purpley black or if you want to go with a, a reddish a reddish type of a black now here is where I'm putting in the opera rose by Windsor Newton so this is kind of the only area that I think I use that color it's not the schminky and um, I pretty much overworked this area. I was stressing out over it because I really wanted it to look, give that really cool fuchsia, purpley glowing effect. So um, I didn't really, I don't think I had a practice sheet. I didn't, that's one thing going back and looking at this, I would have done just those little areas, those feathers on a practice sheet more to see what happens with the colors when I, when they, I mix them and when they use next to them. and. Anyway, I mean, I'm happy with the result, but, um, you know, hindsight definitely would have practiced a little bit more. It, in the long run, it would have saved me more time and um, more, less brain drain, if you know what I mean, as far as stressing over the right colors or the right whatever, you know, to want to do. Because a lot of times, I don't really stress over colors too much and I don't think any artist really should because it's all about contrast um, you know and you, you know say you're painting a flower no one's gonna know if it's a you know if it's a fuchsia pink flower or if it's not you know or if it's a purpley you know yellowy flower no one's gonna know it's just gonna be a beautiful flower that you paint but on the hummingbird I really wanted to get it as close as possible to the reference because the colors are just so amazing. So this was a great study for me on color theory, which I recommend for everybody. And I didn't, and I had a limited palette. I didn't want to go and use every single color I have. I, I really wanted to focus on my palette in this kit, in the Schminky kit. So, um, but I, I did cheat. I used the Opera Rose, like I said. So. But now you can see um, I'm going over again another layer of of my black mixture and going around the eyes. I did the eyes. I have the I have the masking fluid in the eye to save that eye highlight. So you, I don't know if you can see that yellowy kind of area right in the middle of the eye and on the beak. That's the masking fluid, and I haven't taken that off yet. I do that towards the end when everything's all dry and I'm ready to do detail. So um, getting in the edges. So I can see that the, 
the pen line that I did, I can still see it. So I'm following that pen line that I did. So the eyes, so I keep the eyes, you know, not where I want. The eyes are not a perfect circle. So I, you got to kind of be careful of doing that and kind of figure out how they're angled and where the shadows is and all that sort of thing. I like to study. That's why it's great to draw and not trace um, your reference photo or your reference image. Um, I always really think it's a great because then you get to learn and understand where the, your shadows are um, and it's just a study of it basically so when you go in and you do fine detail like this you kind of can see oh okay when I was drawing it um, the eye was at this angle it's kind of more of a 45 degree angle or or it was more of an oval or an oblong or that feather was was kind of leaning towards this way or that way so you kind of remember so then when you go in and do detail like this you you have a memory of it so tip of the day definitely do your drawing so here I go um, with these feathers here the fuchsia feathers I'll call them you can see I'm, I'm messing around with them I'm overworking them I'm not really sure what I'm what I'm doing not really sure what I'm liking what I'm loving I'm trying to get the fuchsia I think what I'm thinking here is that they're too dark. I didn't want that super dark blue. I wanted more of a shiny pink purpley thing going on. Turquoisey. I don't know, purpley. It was more turquoisey. So I'm working it. I left this part in because I wanted I wanted you to see, you know, what I guess what artists go through. You're not alone if you're sitting at this one little area like I did for half hour, 45 minutes. Probably, you know, some people could have gotten the painting done in 45 minutes or an hour, but I like to do a little loose with some detail. Usually I like to do the detail around the eyes and face because that's what gives your subject the character. I usually do animals. Not very many people, I don't do many people, but I do animals, wildlife, pet portraits, that sort of thing. Okay, now the fun part here. So I'm, this is just water. I'm using my smaller brush because I, I'm using, I'm putting the water just where I want um, certain feathers, certain areas to go. So I'm kind of really trying to control the wing. And I wet it first. And this is a mixture of sepia, I think. And this is, I think I did black here just because I knew it was going to be a base coat, a base color, it's not really going to be shown anywhere. I just, I'm using this for a guide for me, for my other layers. color here this is um, I think this is opera rose Windsor Newton opera rose with a touch of the Venetian red so I kind of mix those actually on the paper and that's more that's um, opera rose with probably uh, Prussian blue so I'm kind of mixing those two colors together with a lot of water as you can see because I don't want any harsh lines or anything right now um, I just want it really soft. I'm going for a glowy effect. So, and you know, the wing is in motion, so I'm going for the blurry kind of movement, wing in motion effect. So I'm keeping it really, really wet. And you can see I dropped in, I'm dropping in some more of my, uh, my dark colors there because I don't want to lose lose the, the feather lines. Those feathers, I'm gonna have just a few feathers in, not really in focus, but like a blurry focus, if you will, because I do have that, you can see I have the um, masking fluid on and I just took that off. And now I'm using a, um, 
So that's just an old paintbrush I used for blending the edges of masking fluid. That's a scrubber brush. And um, that is the coolest thing on earth. That is what you do. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm blending in. The paper is wet, moist. It's not super wet. It, I actually let it dry pretty well, but I wet the area a little bit and I wet the scrubber brush. And then you just gently scrub the edges and it blends in the area that had the masking fluid. So the masking fluid, that area, I love the, the look of the really white, but it was a little too white for me. It wasn't quite what I was going for. I wasn't going for the hard edges. So I'm, I'm gonna let that dry. Um, and then I'm going to another area. So I'm focusing on on his tail and his his wings down here, his little underbelly down here. So I'm getting the dark area in, again, getting the structure in. Don't want to lose any of my lines. I'm pretty much using um, my my uh, size one brush. Super wet. Blotting with my tissue. Mixed up this um, kind of fun green with the phthalo green. Mix that with a little yellow and you get this really kind of fun, really bright color. And even with a touch of the Prussian right there, I dabbed a little Prussian blue in there and let it dry. And you just kind of walk away. So see how, see how my, uh, my dark, really dried blue, blue purpley. So I've got quite a few more layers to go to get it pretty dark, to get it where it needs to be. So I added some water, put some water on there, and I uh, mixed up some green, some, uh, there's a permanent olive green that I mixed with some blue that was that turned to be a really nice color, again, with the Prussian blue. So I kind of, I'm trying to stick to the same blues, the blues and uh, not mixing them up too much. And just making a bit of a mess, just kind of playing around, dropping a lot of yellow in there. I don't want it to get too dark, too blue, too green. I want it to shine. I want it to shimmer. I want this guy to shimmer. Again with the scrubber brush, I had some masking fluid there. So I'm blending in the edges and um, but I do have a line there. My, my ink line is there. So I'm following that line. I can see it because this is, a, again, a real important part in the anatomy of his wing where it will show the, the depth. Kind of this will, this will help give it a little bit more of a 3D type of effect when you have the light against the dark there where his wing meets the body. So I was a little particular about that. So I'm letting that area dry, and now I'm dropping down to his paws. Mm -hmm. Paws claws. And they are sharp. Again, with the um, my darker pigments mixed together, sepia. I think I mixed a little black in this one with some blue, with the Prussian blue, and just following, trying to get now the layers of all this guy's feathers. But I'm I'm not shooting for a lot of detail. So now the darker his underbelly is, the darker I make it, the lighter. Uh, yellow next to his wing 
the area I want fuchsia, the lighter that's going to look. So I'm looking to go really dark on his underbelly because I want that yellow to, to seriously pop. So here's the fun, fun part of it all, the best part of it all, doing the wing and the splash and butt effects. So I'm trying to get some movement, some flutter in the wing. The wing is really wet. As you can see, I did some colors underneath. Um, now this is Upper Rose from Windsor Newton, going really pink. And uh, my brush is pretty wet. And I've got a nice point on the brush so I can get those, those edges, but then they got a little too harsh. So I just grabbed some upper rose, got a lot of water on my brush, and just said, you know, went right over it. I'm like, ah, it's too harsh, too much. So I went with the brushes, splash a little bit, tilt a little bit, and that's it. And that really helps when you do that. That really helps so you don't tighten up because I really didn't want this to get to be um, too detailed. I wanted it fun. He's fluttering. He's going after a flower. I wanted to get the movement so I don't get too tight but this area that I'm working on here I did want some detail for the effect I like some detail in the painting so where I want the eye where I want the viewers eye to go Getting the line of the beak, I took the masking fluid off. So now I'm going over the area where the masking fluid was and just blending in some paint and getting some more detail on his little head there. With a little uh, mixture of like Payne's gray and phthalo blue. Turns it kind of made a nice little gray there. 
dropping in some of the phthalo green. Trying to get that sheen and leave that yellow. Okay, now that everything is dry and I'm finished with the details of the watercolors that I want to use, I don't want to use watercolors anymore for detail. I just prefer, I like the white of um, colored pencil, the waxiness, the way they blend. Um, you can see I can go right over the dark, the dark colors, the shadows to get some super fine, fun detail. Now, you could do this with gouache, which is the opaque watercolor, but I like colored pencil. I think they're fun, and I have all these beautiful colors from Polychromos, Durant Light Fast, uh, Polychromos is from, by Faber Castell, Durant Light Fast, and um, of course, Caran Dash Luminance. So, I um, like I said, I was going for the uh, the effect of, of shininess and fuchsia for the hummingbird, so I thought I could best capture that with colored pencils. So I'm working on the eye. I prefer to have a nice detail and focus where I want the viewer to focus on, um, and you get somewhat you know of an expression in the uh, facial features in the eyes. So with any animal, I like to make sure that the eye and the surrounding area is really in fine detail in focus and uh, pretty much the best the best that I can do here so now I'm using my my black um, super sharp pencil uber sharp pencil and you can see I'm getting the, the fine lines around the eye and see how that just gives them some depth so you between the, the the black line and then the white with a little bit of a pink over it because you know, it's never really pure, pure white. I mean, it's super rare that something a highlight is pure white. Um, I mean, for effect, of course, yes, do it. But anyway, um, that's a whole other conversation. So, I'm, so you can see I'm trying to get the the 3D effect, the depth of the eye. So I'm working on that. That takes some time. That's detail. That's super fine detail. And then I'm going to go over. What I do is I lay down some white, a colored pencil. Then I'll go over it with the pink or a purple. That way, that color, the pink or the purple, will be even brighter because it's going over white. It's not going over, say, that light blue right there or that pink that I don't really like right there. So. Um, Anyway, so I'm filling in, just kind of playing around with the colors, and um, again, this this you know this takes time, but I don't know if there's really overworking. I think it's just learning and finishing up and just working it till you're happy with it. Okay, so on the wing, I really wanted it um, basically really black, almost pitch black in some areas. So um, instead of going over and over with watercolor, I decided to use colored pencil, a waxy colored pencil, and then use the um, mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits to blend. And it's really, I love it. It's a great combo, colored pencil over watercolor. I really do think they they complement each other so well. So I'm also defining some of the feathers here in the wing with the colored pencil. And you can see it's a little rough when I put it on, but as soon as I do the odorless mineral spirits and blend in with the odorless mineral spirits, it looks pretty much just like watercolor, it blends right in. So it's really a nice effect.
Okay, so after about three layers of colored pencil, there is the odorless mineral spirits. And I just tapped it on the brush. I did not put a lot on my brush at all, not a lot. I didn't want it saturated because I have all the watercolor underneath. I didn't want that to start moving around. So I'm just moving around the waxy um, product, the waxy pigment of the pencils there. And there, that's a good shot of about how wet my brush is with the um, mineral spirits. You can see it really, when I blended it in, it really got nice and dark in that area. So now I've got a lot of that color on my brush and I'm just going around and kind of filling in and blending in some areas with that brownish color on my brush. And I'm defining the feathers, not all of them, just a little bit, um, leaving some just as a suggestion. Of there's that there's feathers so there's a nice um, pull out view so now I'm with some awesome fuchsia colors of the Caran d'Ache luminance I'm filling in some areas there on the tail and then using the mineral spirits again and I've got some really beautiful turquoisey colors that I'm really happy with and here we go with my trusty ink pen signing away my little heart and there you go